Everyone and welcome back to the No Zone. I'm Charlie. Hello, everybody. I'm Wanja. And I'm Marara. Hooray! Rah! Marara, you're really excited about today's show. Very excited. Now, Marara is right. You have a lot to be excited about today's show. But first, let's go say hello to our studio guests. I'm sure they'll be very happy to see you. Hello, everyone. Hello! Why don't you say a big hello to everyone who is watching at home? Hello! And hello to you too! Hi, Marara. Now, we are really glad that you're here helping us out with today's show. We're going to have a lot of fun while we learn. But before we begin, could you please tell us what today's No Zone buzzwords are? Yes, please. Today's buzzwords are all about politeness. Oh, I like the sound of that. My mother taught me the importance of politeness. That's good, Mara. That's good. Now, could you please tell us today's No Zone buzzwords? Polite. Sorry? May I? Please? Thank you. Thank you, everyone. That is excellent. Ma, did you write down those buzzwords? Oh, I have a super memory. I'll remember them all. Okay. For you at home, if you don't have a super memory, I hope <laughs> that you wrote down those buzzwords. These are very important words, and we will be asking you to listen out for them throughout the program. That's right. And I think we're going to hear a few of them in just a moment, because we all know the Junction Juniors know all about politeness. For me, that's not good enough. Bob, what about you? And the other one who always keeps us here waiting. That's not being polite. Making us wait like this. Ay, who is that really banging at our door? Password. Polite. Spell it. P O L I T. Wrong. Try again. P O L I T E. Yay! Yay. Junior anymore. What? Why? Hey! Wait! What are these marks? Babu! Has someone been abusing you? Please tell us. We are your friends. It's that new teacher, Mrs. Kimanda. Did she do this to you? Babu, did she beat you? I was running to class when I accidentally bumped into her. I was in such a rush that I forgot to apologize. That's when she did it. You should have said you were sorry. I know, but no one has permission to beat me. It's against the law. I'm going to get my revenge on her. You just do it. That revenge is wrong, but no one beats me and gets away with it. That's why I'm quitting the Junction Juniors, so that I don't ruin your reputation. Goodbye. Oh no! Babu's going to get himself into big trouble. What can we do now? I'll go after him and see if I can change his mind. I'll go with Brian. Me too. Okay, the rest of us will go and inform Teacher Pendle that teachers are beating children at school. Let's go. Go, Junction Juniors! Do you think Teacher Pendo would believe us? Maybe. We should tell our parents and they can confront the school management. That's a great idea. No, 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 no. I think we should first tell Teacher Pendo. She's more understanding. And definitely she'll have a solution for us. Yeah. Let's go back. I'm tired. No, we can't. How 
told you that he's going to talk to us. We'll make him talk to us. He's our friend and he needs us now. And the friend he needs is a friend indeed. I'm so sorry to hear this about Babu. Listen, I'll talk to Mrs. Commander. She's new around here and she doesn't know the rules very well. I promise to sort this out, okay? And I'd also like to have a word with Babu. That way I can go over polite language and manners with him. Do you know where he is? What's wrong? Babu ran off. He said that he was going to seek revenge on Mrs. Kimanda. Babu! 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 Can you see him? No. Maybe he went to the river. Let's go check there. to get revenge on Mrs. Kimanda. Maybe he's gone to school to look for her. We'd better find him. Otherwise, he might do something he'll be sorry for the rest of his life. Find him before it's too late. for his actions. I agree, but hitting or beating students is not allowed in this school under any circumstances. There are other effective ways of disciplining children without hurting them. Now let me call in Babu so that he can explain his behavior. Babu. Now what you did today was very naughty and very irresponsible. Can you explain yourself? I was so angry when Mrs. Kimanda beat me earlier. I didn't mean to run into her, but she wouldn't listen to me. It made me so angry. But if you had a problem with Mrs. Kimanda, you should have come and told me. I'm really sorry. I believe you, but you must pay for your actions. Please don't beat me again. Of course I won't. Now I want you to make a long list of appropriate punishment methods so that when new teachers like Mrs. Kimanda come to the school, they know the rules. I also want you to write an apology letter to Mrs. Kimanda and to your friends. Babu, it is important to learn how to be polite, especially to your elders, okay? Okay. And I also want to tell you something. I am really sorry. I should have listened to you and I should not have beaten you, okay? It's okay, Mrs. Kimanda. I forgive you. Okay. Please, come here. Babu? 
Dear Junction Juniors, I'd like to say that I'm really sorry for what I did to you today. I would also like to thank you for letting me join the Junction Juniors, and I hope that whoever takes my place will feel as welcome and happy as I did. You have all been like a family to me. Thank you once again, and I wish you the best to come. From your friend, Babu. Babu, you forgot something. You forgot your photo. You forgot to put it back on the board. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You're still a junction junior. Of course. We never wanted you to leave, even if you threw water at us. It's great to have you back. Go put it, go. <laughs> Wow, that was a lovely episode. Did you all enjoy the program? Yes! Oh, very much. But at first, I was afraid of that teacher, Kimanda. Ah, it's a good thing she changed her attitude. Yeah, she was rather scary holding that big cane. Anyway, did you hear any of the buzzwords? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. I heard the buzzword polite. Uh-huh. Brian said that it was not it was not polite for Babu to keep them waiting for so long. That's right. Uh-huh, Gishanga. Babu used the buzzword sorry. Uh-huh. That's true. Masitza, what else did you learn? I learned that there are other ways for teachers to discipline students without hurting them. That's, That's right. And really? I learned that it is very important to say sorry when you accidentally run into someone. That's right. Oh, and I learned a lot too. I loved the part when Babu says sorry to his friends and they accept his apology and accept him back as a Junction Junior. That was so cool. Yeah, that was quite emotional. Junction Junior is such a great family, isn't it? Yes! <laughs> Do you know what that sound means? Uh-huh. It's time for cool words. Welcome back to Cool Words. Today we are going to learn about verbs in the past tense. Now, who can remind us what a verb is? Oh, I can, I can. Yes, Marara? Verbs are describing words. No, 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 no. Describing words are called adjectives. Now, can you tell us what a verb is? Oh, I remember now. Okay. A verb is a doing word. A verb is a doing word or an action word. Now, who can give us some examples of verbs? Yes, Yasmin? Jumping. Jumping. Yes, Ayuma? Laughing. Laughing. So jumping and laughing are action words, things that we do. What does past tense mean? Just think about it, Mara. I'm sure you can be able to work it out. Now let's help him. Who knows what past tense means? Yes, Ayuma? Past tense is something that has already happened. So when we use a verb in the past tense, we are talking about an action that has already happened. Exactly, and when we use a verb in the past tense, we have to change it to show that it has already happened. Now let's try and work out this sentence. Today I play in the garden. So which is the verb there? What am I doing? Oh, I, I know, I know. Yes, Marara? You're playing. So playing is the verb. That's right. Now, how about if I changed it to this? Yesterday, I played in the garden. Do you notice how the verb to play changes? Yes, yes, yes. I can, I can. Yes. He added an E and a D at the end of the verb. Oh, you're a clever lion. So we added an E and a D to the verb to make it a past tense. Now, can you tell me what is wrong with this sentence? Yesterday, I laugh at the teacher. That sounds all wrong. Of course it sounds wrong. So what should we say? Yes, Diana? Yesterday, I laughed at my teacher. Good. So how do we change the verb laugh? Oh, Marara? simple. Just add an E and a D at the end. That's right. It's as simple as that. To change a verb into the past tense, you just add an E and a D to the end. 
Oh, yes, I get it. But I wouldn't laugh at you, Tisha Pendo. Good. Now, shall we play a game? Yes! Okay. Now, I will give you some sentences which have a space for the missing verb. Now, I want you to pick the correct verb from this ones here to complete the sentences, okay? Yes! Remember, if something has already happened, then you must use the past tense. Are you all ready? Yes! Now, my first sentence is, this morning, I are the pictures in the book. Mm-hmm. Yes, Yasmin? Looked. Okay, so this morning I looked at the pictures in the book. So looked is in the past tense. So the next sentence, yesterday he the ball into the goal. Kicked. Okay, that's right. So, Marara, can you read the sentence for us? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, he kicked the ball into the goal. Good. Now, my next sentence. Last week, she... the vegetables. Mm-hmm. Cooked. That's right. So, last week, she cooked vegetables. Now, to the next sentence. I... in the river. Fish. Good. So I fish in the river. Last year, I over the fence. What shall we use? Jumped. Jump. So last year, I jumped over the fence. And to the last sentence, I hide and seek with my friends. Play. Mm -hmm. Play. So I play hide and seek with my friends. Well done, all of you. You chose the past tense when something happened in the past. Now, can you see what the verbs in the past tense all end in? Yes! They all end in ED. Right. So when a verb changes to past tense, it ends in ED. It's time for Out There. Hello everyone, can you guess where I am today? That's right, I'm in Mombasa, in the coastal province. Oh, Mombasa is so hot, I'm so thirsty. I wish I could climb up these palm trees and take one of those coconuts so that I can drink its sweet milk. Oh, look, there is someone selling coconuts. I'll tell him to give me one. Give me a coconut, give me a coconut now. Ah. Why won't they give me a coconut? I'm thirsty. Ah! Oh no, I've been rude. It must be the sun. It has made me forget to use polite language. I must apologize. I'm very sorry, sir, for being so rude. Please, may I have a coconut? Thank you very much. Please, will you open it up for me? Thank you. The white part is called the flesh, and the liquid inside is called milk. But it doesn't come from a cow. The coconut milk is very sweet and refreshing. I wonder what else we can use coconut for. Come with me. Let's go and find out. I have come to Tiwi, near Mombasa, to meet the Tulisubiri women's group. These women use coconut to make many different products, which they then sell to make a living. One of the products they make is lotion to keep your skin soft and smelling sweet. Let's go and find out how they make lotion from coconuts. First of all, the women remove the soft outer skin of the coconut. This is called the husk. Inside is the hard nut. This is the important part. Next, they cut open the coconut with a panga. Then they grate the white flesh into tiny little pieces. Once the women have grated plenty of coconut, they put it on mats to dry.
Once it has dried, they gather it up and it's ready for the next stage. This is a pressing machine. It is used to squeeze the oil out of the coconut. Look! <laughs> Can you see the oil coming out? Wow! It's hard work, but lots of fun. When they have squeezed out all of the oil, they then pour the oil through a sieve to remove any dirt. Then it's ready to sell. I'm going to buy some coconut lotion. It smells beautiful and will make my skin lovely and soft. I'm very grateful to the kind women for making me feel so welcome. They work so hard, but have lots of fun too. They were very polite too. Goodbye! Now we all know what the secret is to soft skin. Aha! It's in the coconut oil. Do you think it could work for lions? I don't know, Marara. You'd have to ask the Tulisubiri women's grip. Oh yes, that's right. But right now, it's time for us to do something a little different. Yeah. It's time for us to find out if our studio guests are very good with their maths. It's time for a maths challenge, which means it's time for... Numbers! Now, this is a game that we invented to help Marara with his maths homework. Oh, yes, please help me, and I'm ready. <laughs> now, this game is very, very simple. On the board, there are three sums. Now, these three sums are just like this sum right here. Now, if you notice, something is missing from the sum. Now, all the number Anna has to do is come up and solve the sum, and then go down to the number pit and pick the correct answer, like so. Once you have found the correct number to solve the sum, all you have to do is go back to the number board. Once you get to the board, you need to make sure you put your number in the correct position, like that. Make sure you don't get your numbers mixed up, because once it's on the board, it's stuck. You cannot change it. That's right. Now, once you've solved the sum, you get to run, run, run across to your other teammates. And you tag in the person who will do the next sum, like this. Now, there's a catch. You have three sums to solve in just 45 seconds. So we all need to cheer our number runners with the correct answer. Have you understood? Yes. Very good. Now, in number run, speed is everything. Now, the winner of this game, if they do manage to solve the three sums in the 45 seconds, gets to take these wonderful maths books back to their school. Are the rules clear? Yes! Are you ready? Yes! Are you sure? Yes! Let's have our number runner, number one, step forward. All right, let's put 45 seconds on the clock and reveal the first sum. 25 times 2 is what? Go. Right answer, how about the right answer? Go, 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 go. You sure that's your final answer? Tag the next person. What divided by 8 is 4? Go. <laughs> help her with the right answer, help her, help her. Give her the right answer. What divided by 8 is 4? Go, 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 go. Get the right answer. You sure that's your final answer? Yes. Tag the next person. 100 minus what is 25? Go. Help him with the right answer. Come on, come on, come on. That's the right answer. The right answer, right answer, right answer. Right answer. Right help him with the right answer. Right answer. Work it out. Right answer. 100 minus what? Yeah. 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 Time is up. Oh. Oh. Yeah. It's all right. Come back and join your teammates. Come back and join your teammates. Now, on to the first sum. We asked you, 25 multiplied by 2 
is what? You gave 50. Is that the correct answer? Yes. Oh, you I sure? Yes. <laughs> Very good. 50 is the correct answer. And on to the second sum. We asked you what divide by 8 is 4. You gave 2. Is that the correct answer? No. What's the correct answer? 24. No? <laughs> 32 is the correct answer. Don't worry. We will put it right here now. 32 is the correct answer. And even though you didn't manage to complete the third sum, it was 100 minus what is 25. What's the correct answer? 75. Very good. The correct answer is 75. And we'll stick it quickly. So that would have been the correct answer. But let's give them a big round of applause. They completed two sums. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. We have another half hour of fun and learning to go right here on the No Zone. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Now, before we get any further, could you please tell everyone at home what the No Zone buzzwords are for today? For life. Sorry. May I? Please. Thank you. Very good. <laughs> do you think animals understand what politeness is? Oh, yes, we do. Oh, that's right, Mara. I think they do. Now, today on the Wild Zone, we're going to meet some very gentle animals. In fact, they're actually quite shy. So are you ready to meet them? Yes! Excellent. Excellent. Here we go. Excuse me, everyone. I need you to be all very quiet, please. We are going to meet some very shy animals today. Can you see them in the trees? These are colobus monkeys. They have long black and white fur coats. Don't they look smart? Colobus monkeys are very shy animals and they like to hide high up in the trees. They almost never come down to the ground because they fear as humans. Colobus monkeys live in Kenya, in the coastal forests and in the inland high country areas. Look at their lovely long tails. Colobus monkeys love to eat leaves, seeds, shoots, but their favorite food is fruit. They live together in small family groups of about 10. They are very gentle and polite animals and they rarely ever fight. Colobus babies are white when they are born. Their black fur grows when they are older. The mother carries her baby around until it is strong enough to climb trees on its own. These monkeys love to swing through trees. They jump up and down on the branches to help them get high up into the trees to reach berries, nuts and fruits to eat. Many years ago, there used to be thousands of colobus monkeys in East Africa, but now they are very few because humans used to kill them for their beautiful fur. Today, colobus monkeys are still at risk because as humans keep cutting down the forests that they live in. Every time we cut down trees without replacing them, we take away the homes of many animals. We must be careful to protect the environment so that animals such as the colobus can live in peace and safety. That's all for now, Nozone Rangers. See you soon. Bye! Wow! 
That was really amazing. I, I like the fact that they rarely fight. Yes, uh -huh. and I like that they have white fur when they're born, which turns black when they grow older. Yeah, but it's sad though that people used to kill them because of their beautiful fur. <laughs> Do you all know what that means? It's time for... Hot Numbers! Hello everyone and welcome back to Hot Numbers. Are you all ready to have some learning fun? Yes! yes! Great. Now today we are going to learn about fractions for the last time. By now I'm sure you all know what a fraction is, don't you? Yes! So what is a fraction? A fraction is part of a whole number. Well done. Now today we are going to use these bottle tops to help us learn how to find a fraction. Uh, teacher Pendo, find fractions. Have we lost one? No, 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 don't worry. You'll find out exactly what I mean in just a minute. Now, Masitsa, please arrange for me these bottle tops in a straight line. Now, if you have your bottle tops at home, you can join in. <coughs> Let's count these bottle tops together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well done. So we have eight bottle tops. Now, Mwai, can you please divide this into half? Okay. So how many bottle tops do I have in each half of the line? Yes, Diana? One, two, three, four. Okay, and on this side? Yes, Ajulu? One, two, three, four. Great. There are four bottle tops in each half. Now that means we have found a fraction. Uh, we have? Yes, we have found that half of eight is four. Uh, oh. I see. Let's try again. Our line has been divided into half. Now let's divide the halves into half again. Yes, Diana, do that for us from that side. Mm-hmm, Ajulu. Good. So how many parts do we have? Yes, Kishanga? Four. That's right, we have four parts. When our line was divided into two parts, we had two halves. Now what do we have? Yes, Diana? Four quarters. Well done. So we have four quarters. Now, how many bottle tops do we have <coughs> in each quarter? Yes, Ajulu? Two. Well done. So a quarter of eight is? Two. 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 To find a fraction of a number, you divide the number by the fraction of the denominator. Well done. I'm impressed, Marara. Now, who can remind us what a denominator is? Yes, Yasmin? The bottom number. That's right. Well done, all of you. Now, let's play a game. Who loves to play a game? Me, 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 me. Good. <laughs> so, I have some cards here. Can someone help me arrange these cards? We have some cards here. Now, you will use the numbers to answer the questions, okay? Yes! Good. Now, my first question. Hayamba has 14 carrots. He gives Yasmin seven carrots. How many carrots does he have left? Yes, Ayuma? Seven. That's right. So, a half of 14 is 14 divided by 2, which is 7. Okay? Yes! Good. Now to the next question. There are 12 avocados on a tree. Now a quarter of them fall off. How many have fallen? Mm -hmm. Yes, Kishanga? Three. That's right. So a quarter of 12 equals 12 divided by 4, which is 3. Now, the next question is yours, Marara. Mm -hmm. So Ocheng has eight mangoes. He eats a quarter of them. How many does he have left? Oh, oh, uh, it's two because eight divided by four is two. You're wrong. But Chapendo, eight divided by four is two. 
Well, you're right, Marara, but what I asked is how many mangoes does he have left? So he ate a quarter. That means he has three quarters left. So what is three quarters of eight? Oh, now how do I get that? Let's use our line again. Mm -hmm. Now, let's divide our line into four parts. How many bottle tops do we have in each part? Two. Well done. So a quarter of eight is two. Now, we want three quarters, okay? So these are three quarters. So what is three times two? Six. So what is three quarters of eight? Six. Well done, all of you. I'm sure you've all got it. Now, why don't you keep um, playing around with the line and see if you can find more fractions. Time for Art Zone. Hi kids, this is Uncle Supu today and we're going to have fun with coconut. I think you can make a doll with it. So what I need is some maize cob, coconut shells, strong wire and it's soft wire, some pliers, now this is very dangerous, some scissors, a cutter, again this is very dangerous, and some cloth, some string, piece of sandal which I've already cut. So what I'm going to do first is to sharpen it and I use the knife. If you're not careful, you can take away your finger. So you can ask maybe mommy or daddy or somebody big to do it for you. Take a wire and punch in a hole. Next, I want to put some legs in and I'll use the soft wire. I need to take the wire a good length. And I use the pliers again. Put your fingers away from the pliers and bend it the center. And I need to leave a space here, a loop, which I'm going to use as the foot. And I twist the wire. I think that's a good length and I had made another one earlier, which is here, so I have two legs. And I'll use the rubber as the anchor inside the skirt to hold the feet in. So I cut a small triangle. Make sure your fingers are far away. Take the two legs and poke through, all the way through. So the two ends, I bring them through the coconut, through the two holes I punched through, and there, she's already standing. Now for the body, I'm gonna use the maize cob and I'm going to anchor it to the sharp end here. So I'll just take a piece of wire, hard one, and cut a small piece and just put it through the top middle part, soft again part. I need limbs, I need hands. And I had made two sets of hands earlier. And this I just put it up here. And also put it in the same space. One, and two. See, almost half human now. So I take my string now, we start with the knot up here and use it to anchor down. Come to the wire and twist it around. And then I go back up and bring it back. Pull and twist it around the other way. And use the rope again to anchor the arms so that they don't come out. Now I'm going to take the rope and tie it together. Next, the head. And then just poke through, and there, this is my dolly. Now you can go ahead, if you want to put some clothes, you can dress her, you can put a headscarf also. I think I'm gonna make a nice spaghetti top for her. Well, I like what Uncle Supu did with the shelves. Oh yes, he wastes nothing. It's amazing how something as simple as a coconut shell and a wire can be made into a toy. That's true. Now, if you would like more information about how to make the coconut girl, all you have to do is visit our website, which is www.nozone.co.ke. All the information you need is right there. Right, moving on. It's time to put your thinking cup on and test your spelling. It's time for Spell It. Animal, animal, chapter, building, building narrow, building, respect, 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 deep, vegetable, work work, 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 work. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Spell It. Ayuma, Diana, and Ajulu. You're about to step out of the shadows and into the light. 
to compete for the top prize of the Nozone Spelling Champion, in which the winner will go home with their very own Nozone Dictionary. Now, each contestant has just 30 seconds to spell correctly as many words as possible. If you want to hear the word again, simply say repeat, and the word will be repeated for you. The more words you spell correctly, the greater your chances of winning. Are the rules clear? Yes. yes. Ayuma, you're up first. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Ayuma, your 30 seconds start now. Sad. S A D. Agree. A G double R E. Mean. M E A N. Please. P L E A S E. Proper. P R O P E R. Forgive. F-O-R-G-I-V-E Satisfied S-A-T-I-S-F-I-E-D Apology A-P-O-L-O-G-Y Time is up. up. Well done, Ayuma. Well done, Ayuma. Well Please done. step back. Diana, you're up next. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Diana, your 30 seconds. Start now. Kind. K I N D. Sorry. S O W R Y. Accept. A D O C E P T. Excuse. E X E X C U S E. Manners. M A D O N E R S. Welcome. W E L C O M E. Greeting. G R E D O E T I N G. Discipline. D I S C I P L I N E. Behavior. B -E B E H A. Well done, Diana. Well done. Well done. Well done. Ajulu, you're up next. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Ajulu, your 30 seconds. Start now. Rude. R U D E. Greet. G R W E T. Wrong. W R O N G. Polite. P O L I T E. Mistake. M I S T A K E. Pleasure. P. Could you repeat? Pleasure. P L E A S U R E. Friendship. F R I N D S H I P. Sympathy. Turn up. Well, well done, Ajulu. We won't waste any time. We'll get straight to the results of Spell It. I'm going to give you your results in reverse order. In third place, having spelled six words correctly, we have Ajulu. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Diana Ayuma. The difference between the winner and second place was one word. Ayuma, you spelt the word agree with double R. You got seven points and you are in second place. And that means that our winner, having spelt all eight words correctly, is Diana. Let's give her a round of applause, everyone. Well done. Well done, Diana. You are today's Nozone Spelling Champion. Show everyone your dictionary. And another round of applause, please. Now, after such a tense and close edition of Spell It, I think we've all earned our break. So why don't we take this time to sit back, relax, chill out, and watch another exciting African tale. to see you again. Today I'm going to read a fantastic story about a mischievous monkey who doesn't know how to be polite. Hope you'll enjoy it. Oh, and don't forget this week's buzzwords. Mongolo the mischievous monkey. 
in the midst of a deep green jungle where birds sing songs all day long and the sun shines from dusk till dawn. There's a family of colobus monkeys that live in the gigantic, beautiful emerald trees. Papa monkey, large and strong, is the head of the family who protects them all, while mama monkey, beautiful and small, nurses her little ones, who are only three days old. Monkey Mongolo, her firstborn son, watches his mother look after his little brother and sister and begins to feel unwanted and unloved. Mama, I want you to play with me now! Mongolo would demand. But Mama was too busy feeding her babies and Papa was always out hunting for sweet leaves to feed his family. And so, Mongolo would swim from branch to branch all alone on his own. One day, as a bored Mongolo was sitting on a branch, he noticed a young bat-eared fox sleeping under the shade of the tree. Mongolo hurriedly climbed down the tree and shook the fox awake. Play with me now, Mongolo commanded. The young fox looked at Mongolo and simply said the word, please. Please? I said play with me now, Mongolo challenged. If you'd say the word please, then I would play with you at ease, the little fox replied. Bah! I don't have time for your words. Instead, let's play a game of monkey puzzle cards. Now! Mongolo said and revealed a pack of cards. However, the little fox shook his head and walked away leaving Mongolo cross and frustrated. As Mongolo climbed back to his tree, he saw a hive full of honeybees. He immediately went to the hive and knocked one, two, three, four times. Soon, a little worker bee came out to see. Give me honey now, Mongolo ordered. The little worker bee simply said, if you would use the words, excuse me, perhaps I could give you a jar of a sweet tasting honey. Excuse me, Mongolo said in between mocking laughter. I said I want honey now. If you were more polite, I would give you what you were after, the worker bee said as he flew back into the hive. Mongolo left the hive and climbed up a banana tree where he ate as much as his stomach pleased, enjoying the sweetness of tender bananas and crispy leaves. What a selfish little bee and fox I met today, Mongolo thought, not realizing the value of politeness they had taught. Hello, a little voice said. Mongolo looked down and saw a baby elephant, short and petite. May I have a tasty little banana, please? The baby elephant smiled sweetly. Only if you play with me now, Mongolo replied. The baby elephant thought for a minute, then said, okay. But Mongolo threw a bunch of banana leaves, tangled and in quite a mess. Big tears well up in baby elephant's eyes. The baby elephant sees Mongolo laughing at her in stitches. Baby elephant begins to walk away as Mongolo continues laughing. But, but, the baby elephant said, I asked for a banana, not dirty leaves. Mongolo just laughed. Poor baby elephant. She hated being laughed at. With manners like that, you'll never have any friends. And with that, she began to walk away. Wait! Mongolo cried out. I was only joking. Don't leave with that boat. But baby elephant continued walking on until Mongolo finally uttered the word, loud and long. Please, I was only joking, Mongolo said, and offered the baby elephant a sweet tasting banana. The baby elephant ate until she was full. She smiled and told Mongolo they were cool. Mongolo joyfully jumped on her back and cried out loud, to the watering pool. Together, they went to the river, Mongolo telling the baby elephant of all his stories and wildest dreams. Now, let's swim, Mongolo said, and together they played in the water, splashing about. And when the sun began to set, they walked back towards the jungle. I had fun today, Mongolo said. I would like you to be my friend. 
the baby elephant smiled and said, Only if you promise to be polite, caring, and gentle. Mongolo laughed then said, Okay, please, can I be your friend? I promise to be polite, caring, and gentle till the very, very end. The baby elephant smiled. You're welcome. The little elephant replied, and together they went back into the deep green jungle. When Mongol arrived home, he told his parents of the lesson he had learned. He also promised to be more caring to his baby brother and sister by lending out a helping hand. Mama Monkey smiled as Papa Monkey gave Mongol a big warm hug. The end. Hey, that was a cool story. It just goes to show that even the smallest polite words like please or thank you can make a big difference. Hope to see you soon. Goodbye. Such a lovely story. Mongolo the monkey was quite a stubborn one. Oh yes, and it's a good thing he learned to be polite before it was too late for him. Oh yes, but I think we've all learned the importance of using polite language in our daily lives, haven't we? Yes! yes. Great. It was fun hanging out with you today, and we also hope that you had fun. Let's all say goodbye to everyone who is watching at home. Bye! Bye.